Ladies and gentlemen, the situation with the banking system is going from bad to worse every single day. And today we have just got some huge bombshells released. The world's most powerful banks are going to be participating in a huge exercise and all the people that have lost faith in the banking system and have been withdrawing their cash, well, the banks are now demanding them to bring back their cash by the end of today, otherwise they won't be able to use those banknotes anymore. But that's not all. We are seeing the whole system across the world is failing. We are seeing this global financial system crashing right before our eyes. Pension funds at risk are going bust. Currencies are falling. Stock markets around the world are crashing. Bonds are in their worst market crash since the Great Depression. And we just got some new catastrophic news that show that inflation is getting much, much worse in the European Union and the European Union is completely trapped and there's no way out of the crisis that is going to be coming for the EU. So everyone, we got so much to cover in today's video. It's definitely going to be a good one. So let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the news, the facts and the data. Okay, look at this, everyone. Major US banks will participate in climate scenario exercise. People, I don't know about you, but what I'm starting to see is I'm starting to see central banks around the world like the Federal Reserve, like the Bank of England, like the European Central Bank, they're starting to panic. And they know that this current economic model's days are numbered and that this whole monetary system is coming to an end. And so they're rapidly planning and they're panicking trying to create a new financial system. Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Wells Fargo will undergo the exercise, which the Fed said will not have capital or supervisory consequences. The Fed plans to publish aggregated findings from the exercise, but no firm specific information. People, whenever such powerful institutions get together to perform these exercises, you know it is only a matter of time before we're about to see a massive black swan event. And that's what I do foresee coming. We had, you know, kind of like a black swan event in the UK, which I'll go over a bit deeper in a moment, where the reason the Bank of England had to intervene in the bond market was because the pension funds are completely leveraged. They've taken on huge amounts of debt, which is very, very silly for them to do. They shouldn't be risking people's pensions like this. They're meant to be safe assets, but they were literally about to get liquidated and margin called. And this is why the Bank of England had to step in. Otherwise, people would have lost their pensions. And if you think it's only like that in England, no, we're seeing pension funds at risk going bust in the US and Australia as well. Look at this, everyone. Pension fund panic led to the Bank of England's emergency intervention, and here's what you need to know. Central to the bank's extraordinary announcement was panic among pension funds, with some of the bonds held within them losing around half of their value in a matter of days. Now, I have a lot of people still in denial of the absolutely crashing of the financial system, what we're seeing right now. They keep saying, where's a crash? Well, people, we're in it. We're in the middle of the storm. We're in the eye of the storm and the crash is happening, but it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a week. It doesn't happen in a month. A lot of these huge financial crises can play out over a year or two before they bottom. The plunge in some cases was so sharp that pension funds began receiving margin calls, a demand from brokers to increase equity in account when its value falls below the brokerage's required amount. Again, people, these are pension funds using leverage. They should have absolutely no business using leverage. They are risking people's financial futures that have worked hard their whole life, that have paid taxes their whole life, and they are entitled to this pension because they worked hard for it. They pay the taxes. They paid their dues. And this is absolutely crazy what the central banks are doing. They're rewarding bad behavior. They're rewarding these pension funds for taking on more and more risk and risking your savings. Where the pension funds that aren't taking any risk at all that are being are smart with their money while they're getting punished. The long dated bonds represent around two thirds of Britain's roughly 1.5 trillion pounds, 1.6 trillion dollars in so-called liability driven investment funds, which are largely leveraged and often use gilts, aka bonds, as collateral to raise cash. Can you imagine how catastrophic it will be people if these pension funds go down? We're already having a huge cost of living crisis. The pension is already not enough to keep up with the rising food costs, the rising electricity, the rising gas bills, the rising petrol prices. And I'm very worried that we're going to see a Lehman-like moment when one of these pension funds go down and people lose their life savings. The expected losses, which could eventually take guilt prices back to where they were before the intervention, but in a less chaotic manner, will be fully indemnified by the UK Treasury. I love how they use these fancy words here, people, so people wouldn't really know what's going to happen. 
what they're really saying here is these bond markets are going to crash, but don't worry, the taxpayer will foot the bill. This is absolutely crazy. Taxpayers keep on having to bail out these huge institutions that take on crazy amounts of risk because they know the government will bail them out, which is really the people bailing them out. And this is how we're seeing the largest wealth transfer in history. This is why we're seeing inequality get so out of control because these too big to fail uh, institutions, which of course are not too big to fail, if they failed, uh, well, guess what? Another institution would come, they'd create a company and they'd take on less risk and they'd be more productive. So we're rewarding bad behavior and bailing out these zombie institutions. And it's funny how people still think that we have capitalism in the West. No, we have socialism for the mega corporations. They get bailouts. They get universal basic income. They get as much money as they want. And then it's capitalism for the poor in the middle class. Again, capitalize the profits, socialize the losses. Now, again, going back to the topic of the video, banks are now demanding customers that have been withdrawing their cash, maybe hoarding their cash underneath the pillow, whatever they want to do. Again, people should have the freedom to be able to do what they want with their money while the banks are now calling in that cash back. Consumers warn, today, Friday, is the last day paper. £20 and £50 notes can be spent. After September 30th, the paper banknotes will lose their legal tender status. Now, some people may think, oh, this is not a big deal. They're going to make new banknotes. This happens all the time. Nothing really to worry about. Well, what is worrying about this, everyone, is there's a lot of people that don't trust the banking institutions, especially when we're about to enter a huge financial crisis and one that we're already in. Now, say, for example, it's a big pain to get money at the bank. Like I've been talking about extensively, banks are making it harder and harder for people to take out cash. They're having to take out very small amounts every single day. And say, for example, someone's, you know, taken months or years to make these micro transactions so the banks wouldn't ask questions. They've taken out all this cash. They've finally got it in whatever place they think is safe. Well, now if they have it in these notes, well, they have to return it to the banks and start again. And what I fear this is going to lead to is, is what it's going to lead to is banks banning cash altogether. We all know there's a huge push for central bank digital currencies. And what I think will happen is when they issue this central bank digital currency, the banks are going to call in all cash to be returned. They're going to ban cash altogether and it will no longer be legal tender. It said at the time that 1.2 billion of paper, 20 pound and 50 pound notes had already been deposited at its 11,500 branches. While the banks will be pretty happy with this, that's 1.2 billion pounds the banks now have in the banking system that they wouldn't have had otherwise unless they made these new bank notes. And again, you may be thinking, well, this is no big deal. The banks are safe. The money will be in safe there. This is just a normal thing to change bank notes while people, the banks are in huge, huge trouble. We have some more data that just came out today. Let's dive a bit deeper. Well, you thought those banks were safe with taking your cash. Look at this. European bank CEO shatter uneasy calm as recession fears mount. The region's lenders have so far benefited from higher interest rates, but with recession odds rising, they worry about souring loans. And that's exactly what we're starting to see, everyone. We're starting to see with the order sector, delinquencies are up, repossessions are up. A lot of people took on so much debt in 2020 and 2021 when central banks around the world interest rates to zero. They told everyone, don't worry, keep on taking on debt. Interest rates won't go up for years. Maybe they'll never go up again. And this was a huge trap. Now, many people are severely over leveraged, just like these pension funds are now. And they're going to lose their homes. They're going to lose their cars. And it's not just bad news for consumers. If these asset prices drop lower than the actual loans, well, then this is going to be a lot more bad loans on the bank's balance sheets, and they're going to be in big, big trouble. Top executives from Deutsche Bank AG to ABN, Emro Bank, and V are predicting a recession next year that could burden them with souring loans. European watchdogs monitoring systemic dangers warned of increased tail risks for the industry. And in the background, some regulators are already in talks with lenders to remind them of the need to preserve capital. So everyone, it's not just crazy people like me putting out these warnings now. It is the very banking institutions and these banking institutions watchdogs are telling the banks to prepare. We all know we're in a recession now. They don't want to admit it, but guess what? This recession is going to lead to a depression in 2023, and they're telling the banks it is time to prepare because things are going to get really, really tough.
enough. We have the ingredients for a perfect storm in the economy next year. The head of the banking supervision at the Germany's financial watchdog, Baffin, said on Wednesday. The change of tone comes as surging energy bills are threatening to put companies out of business and runaway inflation is leaving consumers struggling to pay their bills. That's exactly right, everyone. What do you think consumers are going to do when they have their loan repayments or they have to decide... Do I pay back this uh, car loan? Do I pay back this personal loan or my mortgage? When they literally have to decide, do I have enough money to eat and do I have enough money to heat? You may think this is a doom and gloom and this is me being sensational. No, this is reality. And actually, reality is much worse than the worst case scenarios even I came up with. Look at this chart here, everybody. Germany's 2023 GDP growth is going to plunge below zero. And it's not just going to be Germany, everyone. It's going to be the US, UK and Australia as well. Wow. The European Systemic Risk Board, a body designed to monitor financial risk, last week took the unprecedented step to issue a general warning according to a release on Thursday. A multitude of negative events have combined to create substantial perils to the financial system, such as sharp asset price drops and lower bank profits. People, they're not mucking around. They're using very strong language here. Substantial perils to the financial system. We have got huge events happening right now. Again, the pound is crashing. Bonds around the world is crashing. The stock market is crashing. And what's going to be the final nail in the coffin for banks is when this housing crash goes from bad to worse. We're already in the first stage of the housing crash, but interest rates are skyrocketing very fast. So we haven't got the data and it normally takes six to 12 months for us to really see the consequences of higher interest rates on the housing market. And again, remember, we are nowhere near the peak of interest rates. So it's only going to get worse and worse every single month. A pronounced deterioration in the macroeconomic outlook would imply a renewed increase in credit risk at a time when some credit institutions are still in the process of working out COVID pandemic related asset quality problems, the ESRB said in a release. That's exactly right. That's something I don't think many people are talking about. These banks have already been hit hard from bad loans from COVID. They're already trying to recover from all these mortgage holidays they had to do, all these mortgage extensions they had to do. They had to reshuffle these loans to try to make these loans look better on their balance sheet than they did. This is how weak the financial system has come. As soon as we get a recovery and they take the stimulus away, the markets and the system starts crashing right away. And why this crash is going to be much worse than 2008 is because in 2008, central banks around the world didn't have inflation to worry about and governments were able to produce huge amounts of stimulus. But look what happened to the UK government that tried to produce stimulus, that tried to take on more debt, tried to do tax cuts, tried to stimulate the economy. Well, it sent their currency collapsing. And this is a warning to other governments around the world. If you tried to use stimulus to get us out of this inflation crisis, well, we're going to sell your currency into the ground. And we can see this chart here, defaults are set to rise. Analysts have been increasing their forecasts for credit provisions. It's inevitable that the difficult economic environment and high inflation will lead to more credit defaults, the CEO of German regional lender Halaba Thomas Gross said Tuesday. And he's exactly right because today we just got some huge news out from Europe that shows how bad of a situation the banks are really in. Look at this, Eurozone inflation, a double digit record, piles pressure on the European Central Bank. Consumer prices rose 10% from a year ago in September and the estimate was 9.7% and data will inform ECB officials before the October rate decision. People, I don't know how other way to put it. The UK and Europe is absolutely screwed. They have taken on record amounts of debt. They had a banking crisis in 2008, but now they have absolutely surging out of control inflation. And the ECB only has interest rates at 0.75%. When inflation in Europe is much worse than in the US and the Federal Reserve has interest rates at 3.25%, if you think the European Central Bank is going to be able to stop 10% inflation with 2 or 3% interest rates, think again. Like I've been warning about, there's simply no get out of jail free card. Either the central bank is going to have to lift interest rates above 10% to bring inflation down and bring the EU into the deepest depression of our lifetime, or they're going to see hyperinflation like Germany did in the early 1920s. And you know what we learned from history, people? Before the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, banking failures was very, very normal. There's lots of banks that went down. 
But the central banks have been propping this system up for over 100 years. They've been kicking the can down the road, but things can't go up forever. What goes up must come down, and eventually nature goes its course. And because the governments and the banks haven't fixed any of the fundamental problems, they've always taken the easy route by printing more money, lowering interest rates, while we're now going to have a much bigger crisis than we would have had if we just fixed the problems in the first place. If you have the means, you better prepare now. I've been telling people to prepare for two years and it was definitely a lot easier to buy food, buy essentials two years ago. It's definitely going to be a lot harder today. Do whatever you can. Start a side hustle to start increasing cash. So when this huge crash does come, this is going to be an opportunity of a lifetime. And unlike these YouTubers that tell you to buy the dip every single day and have just been getting completely wrecked for the past year, no, I'll tell you when the real opportunities are going to come. Now, for all my little viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.